Hello everyone and welcome to a special edition episode from the Intergalactic Aerospace Exhibition, where the Corsair has dropped and the hottest news is Drake. Of course, today isn't so much about any of that, rather, the best new starter ship of all, and for a limited time, the best starter ship opportunity yet seen. Now I know in years past, I've advocated for the Origin 100i, namely the 125 version, and I still think it's a solid starter ship. After all, it gives you awesome speed, good views, and most importantly, it's going to fit into a future fleet of ships pretty handily. Now that last detail gets controversial, and that's fine. Of course, the 125 has some serious drawbacks. It's not amazing at making money, and it's usually not offered as a starter ship. Historically, I've always held that the value a ship brings down the line is pretty important perhaps more important when it comes to starter ships. And this is because ideally you won't be in that starter ship for very long. Now, unlike a starter ship and last year's big IAE reveal, the MISC Odyssey has solid value, sure to bring anyone a fortune and time in deep space with the ability to harvest and refine Quantanium. And we're just over 75 subs from me giving one away this week. So mash that subscribe button if you haven't already, get commenting, and have a free chance at putting one of these in your hangar. All the details down in the description. Now the upside to that Odyssey is that any of the starter ships we talk about today will fit in its hangar, which is a continuation of that down-the-road value I was talking about. In years past, we got the Nomad, which has been the only starter ship that can carry a vehicle, putting it near the top of most people's list. Of course, the Nomad costs just shy of a Cuddy Black, and if you're that close, you should just get a Cuddy Black. Now this year, the Spirit C1 was added, again putting you square in the realm of just upgrade. This time, if you don't like Drake, you still get options. This year, we get the Cutter from Drake, and the Cutter takes the scissors to the other starters. Okay, I'll stop with the buds now. I've taken to calling it the Grub or the Train, because we'll just look at it. On the one hand, it's a radical departure from Drake of old. This is the new Drake, pulling more and more inspiration from industrial equipment and then plastering weapons all over it. If you hate weapons in light gantry cranes and refinement, go check out Argo, who don't make a starter ship. Yes, it flies like a brick, but if you've done the freelancers, it still feels really sporty and nimble, as long as you're not in VTOL, I found out. From a layout perspective, it's frankly an Avenger, Long a strong best starter contender, but you get a bathroom too, complete with the toilet the Cuddy Black doesn't have. The old Drake was slapped together cheap, so crude the beds were unmade. The new Drake is utilitarian still, but refined, so much so you feel inclined to make the bed when you're not in it. Drake has really become about ensuring comfort while leaving off the finish. The Corsair leads that charge as well. The train conductor station is a hard departure from old Drake, but there's a reason a lot of trains feature this view. It works. Well. Visibility could be better, but really you see everything you need to, including up. But the general styling, from bridge to exterior, is exciting even if it's lacking that polish. It doesn't feel like you pieced it together in the junkyard, and, like the new Corsair, it gives off a vibe of cool efficiency. Now yeah, I just spent all that time to say that, but that's because how you feel about a ship, how it looks, and its layout, matters. Especially in a starter. The Aurora did this really well. There was something about its crappy quirkiness that felt sci-fi. It pulled you into the verse, and you felt the detail and richness of Star Citizen in a way that the Starfarer would have had you uninstalling the game. Of course, the Aurora was a performance nightmare, and while the Mustangs that are not starters have some rule of cool, the dullness of its starter version was made up for at least in its performance. The Grub, I mean Cutter, looks and feels cool, but it has decent weapons to do some early bounty work like an Avenger can. Sure, it's got a little less SCU cargo space, and at this point the Avenger is probably still better, it's closely chased by the Nomad, which is the epitome of either you love the style or hate it, and if you hate it, every minute you spend flying it is misery. The Cutter, though, pulls out the stops here. Half the Avenger's cargo, but a cargo bay large enough to fit a mule. Game, set, match. Look, the veteran players won't think this, but options are important in a starter ship if you're actually starting out with it. 
we just never had the options. Carrying an SRV or mule grants you awesome economic powers some of the other starters lack. The longer you can grind with the cutter, the faster you advance to something in your chosen field, or the cutty black, with UEC. It's easy to fly, it gives you easy box missions, exploration, even some light combat. The SCU isn't amazing, but slap a mule in the back and you'll get more SCU. And never mind hand crates galore. Mining and salvage choices are going to be solid with this ship. The only other starter that compares here is that big four-headed turtle, the Nomad. Sure, the Nomad goes the distance further, after all it gets better SCU and easier vehicle access. However, the cutter has an ace up its sleeve here. Price. Now I have a soapbox when it comes to buying ships with AUC and not cash, especially small cheap ships. But that doesn't apply to starter ships because the biggest starter buyer is someone buying their actual first ship. $45 to get into the cutter is a steal. Now yes, that's getting a nice IAE discount, but that includes the game package and more. Even at the regular $60, it's a screaming deal. Yeah, you'll need to buy that mule in game, but come on, it's a $15 ship when you factor in the game package. Best of all, right now, that $45 gets you an LTI starter ship too. Now, again, this only lasts for IAE, but if you were thinking of starting out in the verse, now is the time, because an LTI starter gives you out a platform that you can upgrade this single ship into something bigger and better over time with real cash if you want, preserving its sweet, sweet token of LTI and continuing that trend of down the road usefulness. I'm not a huge Drake fan. I loved my cat for all the years I had it, and I always remarked that unlike so many other ships, the Drake look makes sense on a cargo ship, because you can see the walls getting scuffed and dented and be like, who cares? Not the case on the 890 cargo deck, that's for sure. That said, I just never really loved the look. The cutter is straight up the Space Winnebago from Spaceballs, making it look like a pug. Yeah, they look goofy with that smishy face, but somehow it's endearing and everyone wants one. Captain Lone Star turned out to be a prince, so what's that say about you cruising the verse in your own Space Winnebago? The shape is somehow cool, and when I saw that leaked silhouette, I knew CIG had already grabbed my wallet's attention. It's a perfect size, and it's a fantastic runabout. I will say I actually really appreciate these windows, because it's handy to have an idea of what's out there before you drop this ramp. However, CIG, if you're watching, this landing gear lever is backwards. Mega props for putting a real one in, but it's backwards. I thought the Corsair would grab my attention, and it did, but not like the cutter has. This is the real best in show so far, and likely to still be at the end of IAE. So tell me down below in the comments, am I right or wrong on the cutter? Share this video with your friends, especially those who might want to try Star Citizen, or win an Odyssey. Like and subscribe if you haven't, and I will catch you all next time.